Hi uh, YouTube, this is Patrick, and um, this is late uh, as far as saying what my 10 favorite movies from last year were, uh, obviously because it's already February, but um, I just hadn't gotten around to watching a good chunk of them. There's still a few missing that I haven't seen yet. Uh, I didn't get a chance to watch, watch Mission Impossible 4 or um, uh, Shame, it's a Michael Fassbender film. Uh, it's gotten a lot of attention. And um, there was another one I didn't get to see. Was the other one? Oh, um, Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close, which I, I don't know. I really didn't want to see it, but um, I'm sure I will eventually. I just haven't got around to it. Um, and I didn't want to put this off. I wanted to do this. I didn't want to put it off. Um, I watched recently a couple of films that are all up for Oscars and everything like that. Uh, I'll just do quick reviews of them. Um... So Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy with Gary Oldman, who just got an Oscar nomination, finally, for his whole career. Uh, the movie was good, it was solid, but I would probably compare it to, if anyone's seen the George Clooney movie, Syriana, uh, with Matt Damon, where if you don't pay, like, strict attention, you you won't necessarily be lost, where in Syriana you would be, but this, but you really have to pay attention. And I was watching it, and I, I, um... Even with like with their accents, you have to you know they say someone's name and you're not sure who that person is and it's just you have to really really pay attention. Uh, but it's still a well made movie. I'd give it a I give it a B. Um, then I also saw I saw Midnight in Paris, the Woody Allen movie, um, which I enjoyed very much uh, with Owen Wilson. It was one of my favorite Woody Allen movies in uh, at least um, probably one of my favorite ones from him, uh, to be honest. Uh, I love, like, Manhattan, not a big fan of Annie Hall, but, um, I usually like more, his more serious stuff, but this one, it was just, um, I'd probably compare this one to Hugo, the Scorsese movie, so if you like that, Midnight in Paris is something you should definitely check out. Uh, I'd give that one probably, like, a B-plus or something. Yeah, B-plus. Uh, what else did I see recently? I saw The Artist, which is probably gonna win Best Picture, and I was very impressed and very not impressed with it. Um... I thought the way it was, you know, wonderfully made, really well done. Um, can I can understand why someone might think it was the best movie of the year, just the way it was done and just how charming it is and everything like that. I kind of got a little bored with um, the actual story in the movie. Um, just the guy, the main character in the movie, just goes through like this depression and it just it kind of bogged down for me. Um, but all the tricks with it being a silent movie and everything like that, all the the gimmicks. You know, were just really well done. It was really charming, uh, but I'd probably give it a B. Um, I was enjoying it much more toward the beginning, but then, like I said, it kind of got bogged down in the main character's depression. He was great, by the way. The cast was great. Every, you know, the movie looks great. Um, but yeah, B for the artist for me. Um, what else did I see? I saw I saw The Descendants um, with George Clooney, and I thought it was great. Um, I'll get into the Descendants later. I thought that was great. I'll just say I'll probably give that an A, um, but I'll get into that one later. Uh, and I also saw the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, which I will once again get into a little bit later. Uh, but I'll just say I'd give, I'd give that one like a B plus. Um, but yeah, as far as my top ten go, um, Midnight in Paris would probably just miss it, just miss it. Um, liked a couple of movies that missed it too, but Midnight in Paris just missed it. Uh, I would pretty much... I have my list in front of me. I start with uh, 10, I go with 50-50, the Joseph Gordon-Levitt movie with uh, Seth Rogen. Um, great mix of funny, of, uh, of comedy and drama. Um, I've, I wouldn't, you know, it's toward the top of my list. I wouldn't buy the movie, uh, but it was just really well done, really well acted. Um, so, yeah. I'm just going to say right off the bat, I recommend all these to anybody that's watched any of these thing reviews on here that have liked at least... Uh, or enjoy similar things that I do, uh, as far as some of the reviews on here. If you've, um, if you have similar feelings and some of the other stuff, uh, number nine would be the last Harry Potter movie, which um, I thought was the best one in the series. I enjoyed it. It ended the series. Um, I thought in style it could have been much better. Um, I thought they really missed a chance at a truly great movie. Uh, by just slowing down and taking a little more of an emotional uh, approach to it, but uh, still, still, number nine, uh, the last Harry Potter movie. 
Number eight, I'd go with Hugo Cabaret, the Scorsese film, which um, it's makes it onto this list because of the movie's last hour, and it won't make it any higher because of the movie's first hour. First hour of the movie is okay, the second hour is great. Um, but I, I would definitely check it out if you just like, you know, old-fashioned movie magic. So, yeah. So Hugo at eight. Uh, number seven, Tree of Life, Terrence Malick movie. Um... I've done a review of that on here already. If you like Terrence Malick, you know, you'll love it. If you hate any of the stuff he's done or you don't like Apocalypse Now or, um, I, I don't know, or reading poetry, uh, then this isn't for you. But, um, you know, if you have patience and you like looking at pretty pictures, then uh, Tree of Life is really, really... And it has something, you know, really to say about life, but you kind of have to dig in to really find it or really just see... You know what it means to you. It's it's really complex, but really good movie. Uh, I like a lot of his stuff. Um, most of his stuff, yeah. Uh, number where am I? Oh, where am I? Number six, I think I'm at. Oh, number six, Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Um, I love David Fincher. Um, to be honest, my least favorite film from him. Well, forget about Alien Three. Least favorite is Fight Club. To be honest. Um, it's still a well-made movie. I just it's not a personal favorite of mine. That might be blasphemy to some people, but oh well. Uh, but the thing is, uh, this one Rooney Mara's performance elevates this one to being better uh, for me, better than Zodiac. Um, but it, it lands like right in the middle of like Fincher's um, of Fincher's films for me. Uh, he's getting even more effortless with his style. He's just so good at that. Um, he could probably make a movie like this in his sleep, which I'll go on again to say about someone else later in the list. Uh, but it didn't matter because it was still a really well-made movie, and I'll take it. Um, you know, he'll go off and he'll make something different, uh, I'm sure, next or whatever, and it'll be amazing. And uh, it's okay if he wants to return to this particular genre that he knows and does so well. Uh, and it re it's really good. It's really good. It's got some really messed up shit in it. And Rooney Mara got an Oscar nomination. He completely deserved it. Um, so, yeah. If you can take some of the movie's brutality, and I'm talking brutal, there's a rape scene in this movie that is difficult to sit through. Um, and there's some other brutal images, too. Uh, and as an animal lover, there's something that I, I wasn't too happy about. Uh, you'll know what I'm talking about if you see the movie. And if you're an animal lover, you might not be too happy either. But anyway, very, very well done. Very well done. Um, number five, very similar as far as someone making something in their sleep would be uh, War Horse, made by Steven Spielberg, who... This movie is all sentimental, it's like all heart, and it's just does not care. And um, Steve knows that, and as an audience, a viewer, you have to know that going in. And if you can, and you can appreciate it, uh, then you, I think it's, you know, I think it's a beautifully made movie. It looks great. Uh, John Williams' score is wonderful. Uh, great performances by the horses and all the actors. Um, I, loved, I loved War Horse. It was... Um, uh, it's it wouldn't crack like the top ten of like Spielberg films for me, um, but I still thought it was really really well done. Number four, number four would be Super Eight. The best Spielberg film this year was the non Spielberg movie. Um, he only produced it, he didn't direct it. it was directed by J.J. Abrams, who's getting better. And um, it, it just took me back to watching, you know, The Goonies and Gremlins and, like, Back to the Future and all those 80 mov 80s movies that Steve produced. Um, and, you know, E.T. also, but um, it was just something that wanted to be entertaining nonstop. Much like Abrams' last Star Trek movie. It just didn't want to do anything but be entertaining. And, um, you know, great work for everyone involved, And but just... I, I think it's admirable if, he, if the movie is just obviously trying so hard to please. Um... And it pays off. It pays off well. So that's number th number four. Number um, number three is Eyes of March. I hate politics, and this movie felt like a big pat, pat on your back kind of thing. Um, still don't know how true it is or anything like that, but uh, I love this movie. I loved how it was almost like a, a slow re realization as I was watching it that I was I was enjoying it more and more as the movie went on. Um, I think it's really something to check out, especially with the election coming up. Um, I think it could really give somebody... Well, it might make you just not vote, to be honest. Um, so maybe it's not the thing to watch. I don't know. But I loved it. I thought it was great. 
Uh, number two would be The Descendants, the other George Clooney film, uh, directed by Alexander Payne. And I haven't been a huge fan of his stuff, uh, you know, his election and about Schmidt. Uh, well, Sideways, I like Sideways a lot. Um, but I, this is, I think, clearly his best movie. I think Clooney's, it's Clooney's best performance. Um, I can't really pinpoint why I loved it. I just... I loved Clooney's character. I loved the character of his older daughter who, after the first scene, I thought, oh, God, she's going to be the bitch teenage daughter that, you know, comes around in the end. And it's not. It's like one it's like one scene later you realize that there's something more to her and it just stays consistent. Everything just stays consistent, the entire movie. Um, it's just absolutely brilliant. I would say check out... It, it's just... For anyone that likes anything that's sentimental but not... Um, trying so hard to be like something like War Horse, then I think The Descendants is perfect for you. Um, yeah, just a great movie. And my number one was Warrior, the MMA movie. Um, it was just everything you would want in a movie as far as everything coming to a head. Um, gives you two protagonists that you want to root for. You don't know who to root for by the end of the movie. Um, I know the movie is just filled with, it has a lot of like heart to it. It's got, you know, one or two few many cliches in it but the performances just make it rise above it and it's just um it was my it was my favorite movie last year it was the best no the descendants i thought really probably was a better movie but warrior was my favorite um and to be honest the gray which is out in theaters right now will be fighting warrior for that best spot uh if the gray had come out last year like it was supposed to so i recommend checking that out and any movie that i mentioned um because it's not one that I mentioned, even the ones that I just saw that I disliked. Uh, so I recommend any of them to all of you. Uh, Alright, that's it. I will talk to you guys when I talk to you. I'll probably do a Giants video Saturday night for the Super Bowl. Um, until then, later.